Well, hello, and I just want to welcome you today to worship online here at St. Luke Lutheran Church. I'm so glad that you are joining us today from wherever you are, whenever you are watching this. It is good to be in worship to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Friends, as we begin this worship service today, just want to point out a few announcements to you today. First of all, just want to let you know that we are now looking for a new recording secretary on the Board of Trustees. Janice Charlebois, our current recording secretary, her and her husband Roger are moving off to the San Francisco area to be close to their son, to be close to their new grandson. And we pray for them and we pray for God's blessings as we begin this new move. And Lord, we just thank you for Janice's service here at St. Luke. But we need a recording secretary. Basically, the job description is this. Can you take notes and minutes during the meetings? If that's something that you're interested in, please give the church office a call. Please speak to me. We'd love to talk about that with you more. Monday, August 10th, from 2 to 7 p.m., there in our Maryvale parking lot, we are going to be partnering with Connect Life and doing a blood drive. Whether or not you know about this, there is a desperate need for blood right now, especially during this pandemic. Giving has been lower than normal. So we would love for you to come, and if you're able to donate blood, you can just go to our website, www.stluke-buffalo.org. There you're going to see a tab that says Blood Drive. That'll give you more information. That'll give you a sign-up sheet or a number to call so that you can come and give blood or you can just show up. They're saying walk-ins are welcome. Just want to let you know, all precautions will be taken to keep people safe. Masks and gloves and social distancing. So we would love for you to come and give blood. I realize that many of you who are watching this still don't feel comfortable coming for in-person worship. And please hear me this. I understand and that's okay, and I'm so glad that we're able to worship together through online worship. But I know many of you are missing the Lord's Supper. Missing that strength in taking His body and blood. And so on Wednesday, August 12th, from 5.15 to 6.15, there in the Unionville, or there in the Maryvale parking lot, I'm going to be doing parking lot communion. Pull in through Union Vale. I'll be there. I'll be masked. I'll be gloved. Stay in your car and I will give you the Lord's Supper. If anybody has questions, they can send me an email. Give the church a call. And would you please let us know if you are thinking about coming? We just want to know how much communion we should be preparing. Those are all the announcements that I have for today. I invite you now to worship with us through singing. We're going to sing our opening hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. It's hymn 802, if you happen to have a hymnal at home. As always, the lyrics will be on the screen. Let us worship.
We gather here today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment now for personal confession. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I announce God forgives you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O mighty and gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger, abounding in unfailing love, we gather here today to give you worship and praise and glory that is due your name. We thank you for the loving kindness that you have shown to us. And Lord, we ask that the Holy Spirit produce the fruit of kindness in our lives so that we can love on others. That just through our simple acts of kindness, we can proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. For you live and reign O mighty Father and Son and Holy Spirit, as one God from eternity to eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture reading today comes from Matthew 25. But when the Son of Man comes in glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne, and his nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it for one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it for me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. One stormy night many years ago, an elderly man and his wife entered the lobby of a small hotel in Philadelphia. Trying to get out of the rain, the couple approached the front desk, hoping to get some shelter for the night. Could you possibly give us a room here, the husband asked. The clerk, a friendly man with a winning smile, looked at the couple and explained that there were three conventions in town. All of our rooms are taken, the clerk said, but I can't send a nice couple like you out in the rain at one o'clock in the morning. Would you perhaps be willing to sleep in my room? It's not exactly a suite, but it'll be good enough to make you comfortable for the night. 
When the couple declined, the young man pressed on. Don't worry about me, I'll make out just fine, the clerk told them. So the elderly couple agreed. The next morning, the man said to the clerk, you're the kind of manager that should be the boss of the best hotel in the world. Maybe someday I'll build one for you. The clerk looked at the couple with a smile, then the three of them had a good laugh. As they drove away, the other couple agreed that this helpful clerk was indeed exceptional. And finding people who are both kind and helpful isn't easy. Two years passed. The clerk had forgotten about the incident when he received a letter from the old man. It recalled the stormy night and enclosed was a round-trip ticket to New York City, asking the young man to pay them a visit. The old man met him in New York and led him to the corner of 5th Avenue and 34th Street. Then he pointed to a great new building, a palace of reddish stone and watchtowers and turrets thrusting into the sky. That, said the old man, is the hotel that I have just built for you to manage. You must be joking, the young man said. I can assure you I'm not, said the older man, a shy smile on his face. You see, that old man was Wildem Waldorf Astor, and the magnificent structure that was being built was the Waldorf Hotel. This clerk became its first manager, George Bolt. Years later, Bolt would mediate between Asher and his cousin, John Jacob Asher, in his hotel, the Astoria. They would merge the two buildings into one hotel that Bolt would manage, the Waldorf Astoria. From Galatians 5. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience. And today the fruit that we will be talking about, kindness. Friends, when we belong to Jesus Christ, when he gives us the Holy Spirit, he allows us to bear fruit. Just like healthy trees grow healthy fruit, a healthy relationship with Jesus will allow us to produce fruit in others' lives. Friends, we live in a current world where it seems like being kind to others is thrown out the window. This one simple act, though, can truly make the difference. I know for me, when I've been having a rough or difficult day, when stuff just seems to be stressing me out, someone simply being kind, simply, simply saying thank you, giving me a word of encouragement, it can mean so much. And I know the same is true for you because some of you have even told me about that. Friends, as followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to share our faith. We are called to preach the gospel to a world that so desperately needs it. And so I ask you, if you're rude, if you're mean, if you're nasty, what does that say about the Jesus that you follow? Friends, just the way we live our lives can be a great witness to people. And the reality is being kind, it's so simple. You don't need to be a pastor or a Bible scholar. You don't need any special degree or training. Now, does that mean if we're kind to others, we're going to be blessed? I mean, George Bolt's kindness was rewarded with this amazing job at one of the most famous hotels in the world. Pastor Phil, are you saying that will happen to us? Nope. Well, at least not on this side of eternity. In our gospel reading today, we're in Matthew 25. And in it we find words of Jesus. And Jesus tells us that when he returns, when he comes back, he is going to have the nations of the whole world stand before him. And just like a shepherd at night would separate sheep from goats, Jesus will separate believers from unbelievers. This is what Matthew 5, 25 tells us. 
Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it for one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it for me. The simple act of being kind. It can make such a difference. Now friends, does being kind get you into heaven? No. And we'll talk about that next week. But when we offer just simple things, simple acts of kindness, a drink, a meal, giving someone clothing, visiting someone who needs it. As followers of Jesus, we're sharing the love of Jesus with that person. And Jesus himself tells us, when we do that to others, it is as if we were doing it to Jesus himself. So what do we do with all this? Friends, this is all I ask you. Be kind. Be kind. When you're in the grocery store, be kind. With your friends and your family, be kind. When you come here to worship, be kind. Share the love of Jesus by simply being kind. To him alone be all glory and honor and worship. In Jesus' name, let us pray. O oh, gracious Heavenly Father, one of the fruits of the Spirit is kindness. And as followers of Jesus Christ, we need to be kind to, to our fellow believers, but kind to those who aren't believers, sharing with them the love that we have for you. Lord, I know for me, just somebody's simple act of kindness to me can make all the difference. So let's share that. And Lord, you tell us that when we do this, when we give a drink or food or clothes, when we visit someone, it is if, it is if we were doing it for you. And a great reward will wait us in eternal glory. Thank you, Jesus. Watch over us, protect us, bless us. We give you all the glory. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we come to the time of prayers, I want to update you on a few people that I want you to be adding to your prayer list. As I mentioned at the beginning of this service, Roger and Janice Charlebois are moving to California. And so we pray for God's love and God's strength and God's mercy as they prepare this move across the country, that you just bless them in their new home, that you find them a fellowship where they can use their gifts and talents to worship you and to serve others. And we just thank you for them. We should be lifting up the Smith family, Phil and Stacy Smith. We celebrate their daughter, Amelia, was born on Friday, and we just praise God for that. But there were some complications. And so we lift up Stacy, we lift up Amelia, 
Amelia had to be on a breathing tube, but praise be to God, that is out right now. I got the chance to go visit them, to pray over them. So just pray, pray for Amelia. She's at Children's Hospital right now in the NICU, and we just continue to ask that God's strength be with her. What do you bring? What do you have on your hearts, on your mind? that we can give over to God in prayer, asking him to walk alongside us, to lead us, to love us, to care for us. Let's give it over to him this day. Would you pray with me? Gracious, powerful, merciful God Almighty, we thank you. We thank you that even though you are the amazing beyond our comprehension, creator of the entire universe, you care about us so much that you want us to come to you come to you with everything, with our joys and our sorrows, our victories and defeats, those things that hurt us or trouble us. And you'll listen because you care about us and you love us. Lord, we pray for the Charlebois family as they move, watch over, protect them, take care of them. For the Smith family, for baby Amelia, Lord, put your just loving arms of healing around her. Allow her to go strong and healthy. Be with mom and dad. Be with big brothers as they are waiting for her to finally come home. Lord, for just what we have. And in a moment of silence, we give our praises and request over to you to this day. We pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer this day. For we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the one who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Simply being kind. It can make all the difference in someone's life. Being kind can show that you're a follower of Jesus Christ. It's a way we can help share the gospel with a world that needs it. And it's not hard, it's not difficult, but it's so important. So let's be kind. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn for this online worship service is I Know That My Redeemer Lives. If you have a hymnal, it's 461. We're going to be singing verses 1, 2, 3, and 8. And once again, as always, the lyrics will be on the screen. Let us sing praises to our Savior.
Thank you so much for joining us for our online worship from home. I pray that God spoke to you through this worship service today. Now go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.